I'm your host, Annie Bowles, and this is News Du Jour. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to the News Du Jour. I'm seeing that we have a ton of new listeners, and I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew about everything we did. Um, we This podcast is just one component of sugar-free media. You can also read our podcast as a transcript on our website, www.sugarfreemedia.co. We also have an Instagram page that you can visit, um, one specifically for News Du Jour podcast and one for Sugar Free Media as a whole. And of course, if you would like to support our show, we do have a Patreon. So definitely consider becoming a patron of our podcast. Uh, It's $8 a month. $7.99 and you do get a ton of perks. There's already five bonus episodes up there for you to binge and you get breaking news text messages which I promise they're not constant and they're actually not even text. They're more like an alert Um, but they're not constant. It's really just for big news and you know those days like let's say January 6th when all hell was breaking loose. I was able to keep our patrons updated on a more like hour to hour basis versus you know just one episode for the day. So If you're interested in that, you can uh, become a patron. And if those alerts are ever annoying, you can turn them off um, and still support our podcast. So just want to make sure you guys knew everything that we have to offer. And without further ado, we'll go ahead and jump into the podcast. So first up, Giselle Bündchen and Tom Brady have now reportedly hired divorce lawyers. So This is not going to be a long story. I just wanted to let you guys know this little snippet actually here at the top of the episode. Um, This is obviously really unfortunate and it comes on the heels of him kind of being Lucy with the football, if you will, about retiring. You know, first he announced he's retiring. It was the end of his career. La da la da. Everybody was going along with that. And then all of a sudden he reversed that decision and it was made very clear that Giselle did not want him doing that. So this is probably the reason behind their breakup, which is really sad because they're a long term celebrity couple and they have kids together. But it seems like it's moving forward. So anyway, we'll go ahead and jump into our first regular news story for the day. The North Korean missile test. So people in Japan actually had to literally duck for cover this past week. The last time this happened was back in 2017. But North Korea launched a missile into the air, presumably to show off their military strength. And this set off all kind of alarms in Japan, warning people that they needed to take shelter. The missile flew about 2,800 miles and reached an altitude of 200, or excuse me, 602 miles, according to the officials in South Korea. This means, though, that North Korea, in theory, could have hit the U.S. territory Guam with their military weapons. This is the fifth missile launch by North Korea just this past week, and they keep growing in size. China has also been practicing slash showing off their military arsenal in areas towards Taiwan. More and more, Japan and South Korea are trying to strengthen their ties with one another and with the United States, and this is making things way more tense in that region overall. You know, and leaving kind of communist China and North Korea to align with one another which is a scary thought, of course. 
In response to these missiles, Japan announced that they did consider shooting them down, but decided against it as the missiles were not set to do any damage. Then, South Korea, accompanied by U.S. military aircraft, dropped bombs onto empty islands in the Yellow Sea, proving to North Korea, in case they didn't know, that we are able to take out any threats. So that's where things stand as of today. But again, this is the fifth missile launch this week. So if things continue to escalate, we will definitely keep you guys posted. Now, speaking of strange dictator-like figures who are a little unhinged, Kanye West and his White Lives Matter statement. Let's dive in. So Kanye has been pushing a lot of buttons lately. I mean, I guess ye is always pushing the buttons, but more so than usual, I would say. Obviously, he is finalizing his divorce from Kim Kardashian, and he was taking aim at Pete there for a while. Um, With his music video, he displayed a cartoon where it looked like Pete Davidson was being decapitated. He also changed his profile picture to a picture of Kris Jenner, Kim's mom. Awkward, if not, uh, I don't know. Tense. I don't know exactly what that was all about. I'm not sure why he did that. If anybody has more information on that, please let me know. But on top of that, he's been in this big fight with Gap and Adidas, which were both retail brands that he's been working with. But now he wore a White Lives Matter t-shirt or sweatshirt. It's hard to tell. Standing next to Candace Owens and Apparently, this was kind of the last straw. He's someone who seems to really enjoy doing the most outlandish things one can think of and garnering all the attention that comes with it. So let's describe the events leading up to this moment. Basically, Kanye staged a quote-unquote secret fashion show. It was in a very prominent part of Paris, so it wasn't much of a secret by the time it was underway. Uh, during Paris Fashion Week. So people were invited only the night before. And according to the New York Times, it felt like photographers outnumbered the crowd 100 to 1. The show started an hour and a half late. Anna Wintour did attend with John Galliano, but the pair left early. Kanye finally opened with a speech that apparently rambled quite a bit, brought up many old grudges such as old managers of his, The Gap, and deemed someone his quote-unquote new Drake, which (laughs) as if anyone could be Drake besides Drake. And then he said, quote, I am ye and everyone knows I am the leader, end quote. The shirt he wore said on the front, quote, we will follow your example, end quote, in Spanish. And in on the back, of course, said, quote, white lives matter, end quote. This has now been deemed hate speech by the Anti-Defamation League, which is the leading authority on the subject. Yi has a long history of playing with hate symbols, such as the Confederate flag, and again, It seems aimed simply at ruffling feathers and garnering attention. But has he gone too far this time? I've seen a number of black content creators who I really respect get online and dissect what he's done here. So let's take a listen to one. Here's Emmanuel Acho's statement on the subject. Kanye West, Candace Owens wearing White Lives Matter sweatshirts. At best, it's performative. And at worst, it's offensive. Incredibly frustrating. What is your intention and your action? See, is your intention to undermine the legitimacy of a movement created upon black and brown people being killed without justice? See, if that's your intention, 
incredibly offensive and demeaning. It's not to say that white lives don't matter. Of course they do. It's like all lives do in fact matter. But as we stated time and time again, all lives cannot matter unless black lives matter. That no longer needs to be said. So I simply ask, what is your intention? In society, we've never questioned whether or not white lives matter. We've questioned whether or not the lives of women matter. We've questioned whether or not the lives of black and brown people matter. But white lives have never been in question. Ask yourself, what's your intention? Jaden Smith, Will Smith's son, walked out of the show, as did Lynette Nylander, who is a writer for Dazed. A Vogue editor called the behavior, quote, indefensible, end quote, as did an editor for British Vogue. So here's the question. Will all of this end up hurting Kanye's ambitions in the art and fashion world? Will people continue to attend his shows when it seems he is so obviously unhinged and the fashion really takes a back seat to his grudges and his attention-seeking stunts? Who knows? Some may see it all as good entertainment, but at the end of the day, the Black Lives Matter movement is important and life-saving and definitely not something to use for your own self-promotion. And last but not least for today, we're going to discuss Loretta Lynn's passing. This is obviously a (laughs) celebrity-heavy episode today. Gosh, I didn't even notice that until now. Anyway, the legendary country singer Loretta Lynn passed away peacefully in her sleep in her family's Tennessee ranch home at the age of 90, according to her family statement. She started her life in Kentucky as a coal miner's daughter, which ultimately became one of her songs, the name of her biography, and a Hollywood movie made about her life. She was married by 15 a mother by 16, and a grandmother by 30, but cheated on quite a bit by her husband, which made for many a great country hit. Her lyrics always resonated with women, especially those from rural, mountainous areas of the country. When she came on the scene, country music was actually still pretty male-dominated, but she broke into it in no time and became a voice for women. And that's really what she was known for. Ultimately, she ends her days as a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame, three Grammys, and a fourth Grammy for Lifetime Achievement. She was sassy, but down to earth, country, but glamorous. She fit in with everyone, and yet that's how she stood out. Rest in peace to Loretta Lynn, and that is the news du jour. Today, I wanted to leave you guys with the quote, even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider becoming a patron of our podcast. For $7.99 a month, you can unlock tons of perks like breaking news text messages so that you're never out of the loop, tons of bonus episodes are already up there ready for you to binge, and a discussion board full of networking opportunities and much more. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash sugar-free media today to become a patron. This is the best way to support our show. Our patrons make news du jour possible. But a couple other ways to support our podcast are rate and review on whatever podcast platform you use to listen, share on your social media, you have influence, tell your friends, family, and colleagues that you love news du jour and why you listen. You can also follow us on social media under sugarfreemedia.co on Instagram, just sugarfreemedia, all one word on TikTok, and sugarfree underscore media on Twitter. We also have a weekend newsletter called Dreamers Digest that's full of dreamy content recommendations for your weekend and a life update from yours truly. Sign up today on our website, www.sugarfreemedia.co 
Our music is by Joey Lavoy and Nicholas Foster. Our cover art is by Hannah Pierce Photography. Our Sugar Free Media logo is by Catherine Jezik Designs. Any twinkling or little footsteps you might hear in the background are by my dog, Rhett. He's a rescue pup and always records with me. We appreciate you listening and look forward to telling you about the news again next time on News Du Jour. Broadcasting from... Oh, oh.